Welcome back to another Tips and Tricks Thursday. My name is Derek, and today we're gonna to be going over a few things that have come out with the new iOS 18, and we're gonna talk a little bit about the iPhone 16 series. So let's get into the video. So the new iOS 18 no longer uses the same GSX system, well at least in the way that they have done it in the past. But now it's built in kind of connecting to the servers through the settings in the phone itself. Which on the one hand is really cool because when it comes to replacing parts, whether with genuine or aftermarket, it means that techs will have an easier time in completing the repair. It will also allow the customer to see when a genuine part has been used. Basically, the phone will go into service mode and then repair diagnostics, and you'll be able to verify whether or not that part is genuine or not with this process, which I'm sure you've seen as there's been plenty of posts on social media showing this process and some of the fallbacks and some of the cool things about it. And one of the cool things is when successful, it restores all of the parts functions. When replacing parts that are aftermarket, you may lose specific functions. Some of them aren't as important as others, but being able to have the option now to simply click a button in the settings and have it register a genuine part and restore all the functions is pretty cool. So aftermarket parts will still be registered as unknown. They will still work, there just may be some limitations. But there will definitely be issues with genuine parts if the phone that they were paired to is iCloud locked or especially reported as lost or stolen. If they're simply iCloud locked, if you have access to the information or to the iCloud information, you will be able to get around that actually going through the process. There will be a moment kind of like a iCloud activation lock that we are so used to within the settings. You'll be able to do the same thing for the actual parts and unlock them. I can see why Apple has gone this route when it comes to security measures. Given that phones that are actually reported lost or stolen, the incentive to steal these devices is going to be smaller and smaller, which is pretty cool. One big thing to note is when working with the genuine OEM screen. In past, what we would do is we would copy the true tone using a programmer by reading it, and then we would write that to a new screen. When it comes to genuine screens, don't mess with True Tone. Altering True Tone is going to mess with it, and it may not be registered. When it comes time to calibrate it, it won't be registered as genuine. So if a screen has been updated with the iOS 18, don't touch True Tone. As like I stated, it won't be accepted as genuine. And something that's also become obvious is that the proximity sensor is also paired to the screen itself, and those are paired to the phone. And because it has that pairing, if you simply try to replace the proximity sensor, the phone will recognize that. And even when all the service mode and repair diagnostics have gone through and, and have paired up all the parts, the phone will still have kind of a log, a history of what parts have been replaced, even if they are completely genuine. There are some really cool changes with the iPhone 16 series. For example, the iPhone 16 no longer has a battery with the same type of pull tabs. Using a nine volt battery, you'll be able to actually connect up one of the leads that's at the bottom of the battery with the ground using alligator clips to a nine volt battery. And in about a minute and a half later, the adhesive will actually have let go and is reusable. Time's up, let's disconnect the power source. And sure enough, I had no trouble at all pulling this battery out. Apple says that this process can be safely performed with as much as 30 volts. So let's try it. We're powering it with 20 volts from our power station and it's utterly incredible. Never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined removing a glued in battery in five seconds flat. Come to think of it, never would I have imagined that I'd be hot wiring an iPhone. This process is so clean that once you apply the current, you can use gravity for the rest of the work. So extracting these batteries is actually going to become quite easy. The iPhone 16 Pro Max doesn't have that same technology, and the iPhone 16 Pro has a metal encased battery, just like we've seen on some of the Apple Watches. And I think that that is going to be the future of all iPhone batteries going forward. They're all gonna convert over to that metal shell. And there's one new addition that I'm sure you've all probably seen, which is the camera button. And although it's really cool and I can see how practical it is when using the camera function, one of the things that you may note is that that button 
has been tack welded into the frame. Now let's get a closer look at that camera control button. It's held in by a few Phillips screws and a few brackets. And there's a tiny connector over here that's likely connecting the capacitive side of the button to the tactile switch side. I've been messing with this camera control button for a little while now and I can't see any feasible method to actually pull it out without breaking it. It looks like it's just welded in and well, I don't want to damage it because of our repairability test so I'm going to leave it alone for now. But if you can't replace this, well, that's kind of concerning. I'm sure that somebody will come out with a solution. I'm pretty sure that I'd be able to carefully grind away the tack weld points and extract that button, but it's definitely not practical and it's definitely going to cause issues when replacing the whole housing. As the phone now registers, if the housing has been replaced because of that. So you have the back glass that's also paired with a component. I'm sure it's the same component on the wireless charging flex, the screens, the batteries, the cameras, everything seems to be serialized now. So the display and the battery seem to be the only components right now that are completely locked to the phones. If one is used on another device without removing the locks, they will be treated as aftermarket parts and they will have their functionality reduced. But if you do remove those locks, you will get the full functionality of those parts back. Now the parts replacement history, that the log that it keeps, it doesn't seem like a bad thing at the moment, but I have my concerns because who knows how it will be used in the future. A couple things to note is that there have been a few reports about phones being completely bricked after opening the repair assistant and trying to calibrate unactivated parts. This might have just been an issue with the servers, but it could possibly be something more sinister. So this system should allow for calibration of all paired parts, but there have been a lot of well-known channels on YouTube and other social media showing flaws. One of the big ones that I noticed was that although the rear camera can be replaced, the LiDAR sensor is seemingly still paired to the board, but I'm sure there's gonna be a workaround. Start and finish repair and see what happens. The phone might honestly brick when we hit this. There's only one way to find out. But the phone didn't brick. Nothing happened. There was no locks, but we couldn't calibrate the back camera because of the same LiDAR issue. Now I'm really confused. Most posts and videos that I've seen with regards to Face ID calibration using a genuine part haven't been successful, but apparently some have, and I'm sure that there's an explanation for when it doesn't work. Because of this, I decided to give the phone back its original LiDAR scanner and see if that works. To my surprise, it did. The camera calibrated. The thing is though, that means the LiDAR scanner is still completely serialized with no workaround or potential calibration process. There's always a catch with Apple. Face ID was a whole other monster. I tried absolutely everything to get it working, like retesting to see if it still works in the first place, and even completely restoring the iPhone using iTunes. Nothing was working on my end, but other technicians have verified that Face ID can work again, so we'll have to give Apple the benefit of the doubt on this one. Okay, Face ID, yes, 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 we do want to set up Yes, let's do, we're gonna do it. Set up face ID. How to set up face ID, get started. All right, here we go. It is not gonna say face ID unavailable. No, 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 no. It's going to show me the little circle and I'm gonna be doing this in just a second. Get started. <gasps> no! Flip a table. Face ID unavailable. Oh, I am so bummed out. It's not working, Brad. It won't let me use this flood illuminator. This sucks. On the video that I did the other day, giving up, telling everybody to go complain, this stuff doesn't work. That might still be true, but I had a success the very next morning. I came back and check out Greg's phone. It is paired to somebody else's flood illuminator. So I was able to swap a screen with the flood illuminator from somebody else's phone over to Greg's phone. And look, it's letting me set up Face ID. 
My face, it's unlocked. Isn't that ex In summary, Apple still maintains strict control over their iPhone repairs. While the repair assistant allows users to connect genuine Apple parts, those parts must meet Apple's criteria, which can change at any time. A concerning prospect. Third-party parts still won't function properly. And again, Apple has introduced a new method for removing the battery in the iPhone 16. And not only have they continued to pair components on the back glass, but also now in the housing. And since the repair assistant requires access to the internet and iOS updates, iPhone repairs remain unpredictable. What works today could be rendered obsolete by future software updates. Additionally, Apple seems to be adding an activation step for parts, which is subject to Apple servers being fully functional at all times, further complicating the repair process. It does look like the iOS 18 will allow for the batteries to be replaced using the core only method. And with the tag on flex being able to override the data in the settings after going through Apple's repair and diagnostics in the settings. All of this done without having to flash the phone like we've had to since the iOS 17.4. But only time will tell if all of this information is going to stay or if it's going to change. So there's definitely some good things and most definitely some things that could hopefully get better in the future. If you have anything to add, leave it in the comments below. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.